Another unconventional source of oil is so-called oil shale. The most extensive high-grade deposits in North America and probably in the world cover about 16,000 square miles at the border between Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming, about half the area of the Alberta tar sands. They've been estimated to contain about 450 billion barrels of potential oil, of which it might at present be practical to recover about a sixth, about 80 billion barrels. These shales, the so-called Green River shales, were deposited in a large saline lake about 40 million years ago in Eocene time. Abundant fossils indicate that the shale was originally an organic ooze, rich in pollen and partly decayed plants. The rock itself is a fine-grained sedimentary rock with the organic matter giving it a dark color. In contrast to the residual bitumen in tar sands, Oil shales contain organic material that's not yet been converted to oil or gas. And to do this requires temperatures of over 900 degrees Fahrenheit and extensive processing. The processing requires about 100 gallons of water for each gallon of oil recovered, a large demand for the arid area in which these oil shales occur. In this pilot plant set up in 1965, the shales are mined underground. Mineable layers are considered to be those about 100 feet in thickness. And the oil shale is carried out to the processing plant in 80 ton trucks. Underground, a scraper breaks away the oil shale from the sides of the drifts. The mining methods underground are quite closely similar to those used in a metallic or conventional mine. The shale is drilled and dynamited, but it's, it's difficult to see this being an economic process in the near future. Most other oil shale is recovered in open pits. The miners leave the drifts during the dynamiting of the ore. And the same kinds of techniques as in conventional mines have to be used to secure roofs, for example. Roof bolts are here being inserted to make sure that fragments of the oil shale don't fall to the floor of the drift. The initial stage of the processing requires the crushing of the shale in order that later on the heat can drive off the organic matter which is contained between the silt and the mud particles of the rock. The essential part of the process after the crushing is the heating of the oil shale. It's preheated before it's mixed with hot ceramic balls and then rotated in a drum. This drum results in the driving off of the hydrocarbons, the organic matter in the shale. The ceramic balls in the slowly rotating drum are at temperatures of several hundred degrees Fahrenheit. The vapors are then led away and condensed. One of the problems is getting rid of the waste, but the oil itself is immediately usable. The refining of oil shale continues and rather hurries along a process that had begun in nature. That is the formation of hydrocarbon molecules from the organic material of the dead matter in the shale. Now, once that has occurred in normal oil, the oil then goes through a second stage, a stage of migration from the source rock into a reservoir rock. In these diagrams, the oil is the orange layer, above it is gas, beneath it is water, and it's found in sandstone between shale layers. This is the reservoir rock characterized by its porosity, that is space between the sand grains, and the shale is characterized by the inability to allow the oil to pass through it. So the oil is trapped in the reservoir rock, in this case, in an anticline. In the Persian Gulf, 
oil is trapped on the flanks of salt domes, which push up through the, uh, the overlying rock, trapping the oil on the flanks. An interesting byproduct of the movement of the bitumen into the tar sands in Alberta is fossil wood. Um, <clears throat> wood that's been soaked by bitumen. It looks rather like a creosote at fence post, but in fact that wood's about a hundred million years old. The normal way to find wood is mixed with other partially decayed plant matter as coal, which far overshadows oil as a resource of fossil fuel. In the United States, there are about eight trillion tons, of which only about 2% has been used. In Canada, there are also vast quantities of coal, particularly in the western provinces. Where the coal seams are not more than 50 to 100 feet below the surface, the overburden can be stripped away just as it is in the tar sands, and almost all the coal recovered by open pit mining. This is the major mining method for recovering coal in the west of Canada, as described by